Do you think that American women are unmarriageable? Oh, this one's probably going to get banned, but I'm going to answer the question because she is asking a legitimate question, and I love that she is, to be honest with you, but I know my answer is going to trigger some people. The answer is yes, American women have become unmarriageable, and it's not really for the reasons you're talking about. You talk about being promiscuous and all that. Honestly, I could care less what somebody does. What it is is they don't respect us. They don't respect us as men. They don't respect us as human beings. They have this preconceived notion of what we're supposed to be, which is perfect. They have all their criteria that no man could ever meet. And even if he managed to, they'd create new criteria that, again, he could never meet. So, yes, marriage is done. We've walked away. Dating is done. We're done. That's where it's at. Enjoy. My man won't leave a marriage if they're unhappy. I've been asked this question a lot from women, and here's the honest truth coming from a man who once was in an unhappy marriage. Number one, we love our children. We would sacrifice our happiness any day of the week just to be near our kids and tuck them into bed. Another reason is they know that they'll be financially ruined if they leave. Even if they were the world's greatest husband, most courts would deem the benefits of the divorce to the ex-spouse by giving her alimony or child support, leaving him in a dire financial situation, which he will be crippled for the next 5 to 18 years. And last, truthfully, deep down we still love our wives, and we want things to be better. What does a guy get from a, a woman that he couldn't get from a cook, a cleaner, and a hooker? So this is what internalized misogyny looks like. This woman jumped out there and said the only thing that women bring to the table are cooking and cleaning and intimacy. See, pick me's have to exist so that men can have women to point to and say, see, it's not just us. Women feel like this too. She don't represent us. Hey, sorry, who lives longer, married men or single men? Here's what I found from harvard.edu. Statistics on marriage and health show that married men are healthier than unmarried or divorced men and are also more likely to live longer. So while y'all out here worried about cooking and cleaning, good women out here adding years to your life. So why don't you go and see if you can get that from a cook, a cleaner, and a hooker? So I understand what she's saying. So what she doesn't understand is that these men now, they're waking up. They're realizing, holy shit, if I get married, I could end up in divorce and she could take half my shit. That is the real question. See, what she's missing here, it's not that men don't want to get married, is that men don't want to get fucked through divorce. Do we need men? Do we need men? No. Do we need men? Um, no. No? We don't need short men. Do you need a man? Do need a man? Oh, God. Do you need a man? No. Do we need men? No. Why? No. Do we need men? No. No? Do we need men? We need men to make us stupid. Do we need men? <laughs> Do we need men? Do women need men in this world? Young liberal women are some of the least informed, most discriminatory people out there. And it's like, I look at single guys and honestly, I get it. If I were a guy single looking at like people like this as my dating prospects, I 100% would be running the other way. We'll see if these women are still so keen on not needing men 20 years in the future when all they have are their cats and their wine. Many women today prioritize their independence and self-sufficiency, which can sometimes be perceived as devaluing the presence of men in their lives. This shift in mindset is not about disrespecting men, but rather about asserting their autonomy and capabilities. As women gain more opportunities and resources to pursue their goals independently, they may feel less reliant on traditional gender roles or relationships for fulfillment. However, it's important to recognize that not all women share the same perspective, and generalizations about the attitudes of American women toward men can be misleading. While some women may indeed prioritize their autonomy over traditional commitments like marriage. I just think marriage is an L. In today's day and age, I mean, there's obviously the tradition component if you're, if you're religious, but um, you know, when it comes to the government involvement and the potential uh, um, financial ramifications of having to unwind a marriage it's just it does not make sense uh, so don't get married guys don't do it um, <laughs> you do uh, but you could have a life partner for example but you just don't want 
you don't need the government involved exactly in that. right yeah okay and uh, fully Based. wants the whole white picket fence we are husband and wife but i just don't feel the need to go and sign some paper that mm. lets them know that we are yep while the concept of a life partner appeals to some many are wary of the legal implications particularly the potential for unintentionally entering a common law marriage without a formal contract. Avoiding this pitfall requires careful consideration and proactive steps. Couples can establish clarity by outlining their intentions and expectations through written agreements, such as cohabitation agreements or partnership contracts. These documents can specify the terms of their relationship, including property ownership, financial responsibilities, and what would happen in the event of a separation. Additionally, maintaining separate finances and assets can help distinguish the relationship from a common law marriage in the eyes of the law. Men are reluctant to do so. Women are not desirable right now. Everyone's a Kim Kardashian clone. I asked you earlier, what, what don't men want? And you said promiscuity. Well, that seems about the only thing that's being offered right now. <laughs> <laughs> when I open my Instagram and I've got butt cheeks and I'm going, people are like, I don't understand why no one wants to, this woman's been married four times. I'm like, well, I can, I can understand it because even if men think they want it in the short term, when you see a girl, she's half naked, she looks good. Yeah, sure. You probably do want to have sex with her. I bet yeah. you're wired that way. You're yeah. hardwired that way. Yeah. But then what happens after you, after you have sex with her and you realize that so did 20 other dudes 100%. in the same week, you don't want her. You nailed it. You yeah. absolutely not only nailed it. Me calling my ex-husband while we were separated because I was having a panic attack and he was my safe person. Him coming to pick me up even though I was the one divorcing him. I completely understand this. I did it several times. I struggle with the sadness of the decision, but it was needed. So your ex-husband is needed, but he's your ex-husband. Mine didn't come. I go through them alone now, and it hurts every time. There is a disconnect happening where women are leaving their men, yet expecting them to stay and keep performing their husbandly duties. Do you think if he called her having a panic attack that she'd even pick up the phone? Being expected to constantly provide and care for people who have given up on them is not good for men's souls and their growth. It is beating them down mentally. Even if it's not your intention, it is so incredibly manipulative to break up with a guy and then expect him to console you through the breakup. In contemporary society, the landscape of marriage is evolving, marked by shifting gender roles and complex dynamics. Men, increasingly cautious, delay marriage due to fears of intimacy becoming a weapon against them. Concurrently, women, empowered by feminist strides, adopt traits traditionally associated with masculinity, while men explore aspects of femininity. This metamorphosis challenges conventional notions of gender and complicates the feminist agenda, which once focused on basic rights like suffrage and economic independence. Yet, feminism's evolution has sparked controversy. Some perceive it as having transcended its original goals, morphing into a supremacist force bent on dismantling Western civilization. Critics argue that toxic manifestations of feminism contribute to the disintegration of nuclear families, leaving a trail of broken lives and shattered finances in their wake. The toll of toxic marriages on men's well-being and prosperity is palpable, fueling skepticism about the institution of marriage itself. Amidst this turmoil, a proposed solution emerges a formalized written contract outlining the terms of partnership before marriage. This approach seeks to mitigate the risks associated with assumptions about rights and responsibilities. While not a panacea, it offers a pragmatic step towards rectifying a flawed system, providing clarity and protection for both parties entering into marriage. You know, guys, the key to happy marriage is simply realizing that sometimes you have to think outside the box. For example, the next time you can't agree on what to do for the evening, simply start getting undressed. Your wife will immediately get a headache and fall asleep. <laughs> and you're free to do whatever you want. Write that down. You know, guys, if you want to build a long, healthy, trusting marriage, you have to learn how to problem solve together. For example, the next time you're driving the family somewhere, 
your wife's vehicle starts making that absolutely terrible noise. Simply look over at her and ask her to stop talking. That should fix it. Write that down. today and this comes from a New York Times article is do women need men audience do we need men wow they didn't seem very enthusiastic some of them didn't even clap some of them didn't want to clap what wow come on at least you know put your backs into it Just like a woman. no motivation at all then women wonder why men are walking away please we're, we're gonna go toe to toe on this because the article, the article <laughs> that was, does that was less than overwhelming yeah <laughs> I, I was trying to ignore it. I was like, <laughs> I was really, I was, come on, everybody. Really help me out here. Yeah. That is so underwhelming, really. Well, you can find many men that will clap for women, though. You can find so many simps that will just clap for women for nothing. You gonna put your hands together? You better stomp your feet and light a match for this pussy, goddammit. Ah. Absolutely nothing. Anyway, according to this article uh, in the New York Times, it says that men are becoming obsolete biologically. Here's a quote. If men were cars, who would buy the model that doesn't last as long? Say the same thing about women. Shong Yu could say the exact same thing about women. But you see, when women say it's funny, though, ha ha, when women say it's funny, let's have a laugh. When we say it, though, it's misogyny. And ends up impounded more often. <laughs> That's an article that's coming from a, a, an op-ed op in the New York Times. I'm sorry. Uh, listen. Yeah, man. The institution of marriage has undergone a significant transformation with the involvement of the government, rendering what were once religious ceremonies into civil unions. This shift has prompted calls for the complete disentanglement of the state from marital affairs, advocating for a clear distinction between religious marriages and civil unions. Under this proposed system, individuals would have the freedom to choose between a marriage solemnized by their chosen religious authority or a civil union recognized solely by the state. However, the prospect of such reforms remains uncertain, with many resigned to the status quo persisting throughout their lifetimes. Meanwhile, disillusionment with traditional marriages grows, exacerbated by the revelation of true intentions and the prevalence of non-intimate unions. Men, in particular, express reluctance to partake in a system they perceive as rigged against them, where financial and custodial outcomes overwhelmingly favor women in divorce proceedings. Indeed, statistics paint a bleak picture, with divorce rates hovering around 50%, the majority of which are initiated by women. In the aftermath, mothers typically secure sole custody of children, leaving fathers with limited visitation rights and substantial financial obligations. The imbalance in outcomes reinforces men's skepticism towards marriage, viewing it as a high-risk endeavor with little reward. Proposals for reform, such as the widespread adoption of prenuptial agreements, offer a semblance of protection for both parties. Yet, emotional barriers and societal stigmas hinder their implementation, as women often interpret prenups as a lack of trust rather than a prudent safeguard. Moreover, the legal ramifications of marriage weigh heavily on men, particularly in Western societies where family laws tilt in favor of women. This disparity fosters a climate of apprehension and strategic avoidance among men who perceive marriage as a gamble with unfavorable odds. The underlying issue, some argue, lies in the changing dynamics of gender roles and expectations. As feminism progresses, traditional notions of masculinity and femininity blur complicating interpersonal relationships and exacerbating tensions between the sexes. Women's empowerment, while commendable, has inadvertently contributed to the erosion of trust and intimacy within marriages. Ultimately, the path forward remains uncertain, with no clear solution to reconcile the diverging interests and grievances of men and women. Yet, dialogue and compromise offer a glimmer of hope as society grapples with the complexities of modern relationships and seeks to redefine the institution of marriage in a more equitable and sustainable manner. That's all for today on Alpha Male. If you enjoyed the video, please hit the like and subscribe button. Don't forget to turn on notifications. You can support the channel by becoming a member or sending a super chat. Share your thoughts in the comments. See you tomorrow.